Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a number theory problem from Junior Balkan Math Olympiads. Prove that there are infinitely many natural numbers that satisfy x squared plus y cubed plus z to the fourth equals t to the power 11. So we're not trying to find all solutions to this equation, we're just proving that there will be infinitely many. Okay, so here's how we can proceed. I'm going to assume that x is equal to, or x can be written as, 3 to the power k, y can be written as 3 to the power m, z can be written as 3 to the power p, and t can be written as 3 to the power s, where these are going to be positive integers. Okay, now when I do the replacements, this is what happens. 3 to the k squared, 3 to the m cubed, 3 to the p fourth power, and on the right hand side we have 3 to the s, to the power 11. Now, at this point, if all these terms are equal, then that will be convenient because we can basically write, uh, multiply one of them by 3, which is going to give us the sum on the right hand side. So, what I'm trying to say is if 3 to the power k equals 3 to the power m, um, I mean not 3 to the power k, if 3 to the power 2k equals 3 to the power 3m, and that equals 3 to the power 4p, that implies basically 2k equals 3m equals 4p. Now when you consider just one of these, for example, we have 3 to the power 2k, and we're adding the same thing three times, so it's times 3, that should give me 3 to the power 11s, which means that this is 3 to the power 2k plus 1 equals 3 to the power 11s, which means that 2k plus 1 is equal to 11s. In other words, 2k can be written as 11s minus 1. Now what I said here is also true for 3m and 4p since they're all equal. So I can safely say that if 2k is equal to 3m and that equals 4p, all of them are also going to equal 11s minus 1. So we got some kind of equality here. Let's go ahead and work off of that. Now what is this supposed to mean? So we're talking about three different numbers, k and p, and they're multiplied by 2, 3, 4, and they're all equal to each other. So let's go ahead and think about that first. So we're kind of thinking about least common multiple of 2, 3, and 4 here, which is 12. In other words, all these numbers can actually be represented by a multiple of 12. So why not replace it with something like 12u? Okay, great. At the end, we can always go back and back substitute all these things to find x, y, z, in terms of k, m, p, or whatever at that point we have. Okay, so, so these are all multiples of 12u, I mean 12, so I'm able to write it this way, but this gives us a really nice equation. Why? Because if you look at it, we were able to get rid of a lot of variables here and ended up with two variables. And this is kind of nice because this gave us a Diophantine equation, a linear Diophantine equation in two variables. As you know, We've talked about Diophantine equations before I've made a video, I'll include the you know, link in the description, but these are easy to solve, you know, the linear ones. So what I'd like to do, and this one is particularly interesting because of the difference between 12 and 11, so we have a really nice way of solving it. So let me go ahead and show you the solution to this one because this is basically critical. So I'm going to write it as 11s minus 12u equals 1. Notice that 11 minus 12 is negative 1, but 12 minus 11 is equal to positive 1. Therefore, I can safely say that if s and u are both negative 1, we got a solution, right? I know we're not looking for uh, negative solutions here, we're interested in natural numbers, but that doesn't matter. As long as I can find a single solution, I can just go off of that and find infinitely many solutions to this linear Diophantine equation. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write this equation as 11s minus 11u minus u equals 1, obviously, and I want to put the u on the other side. So notice that the left-hand side is a multiple of 11. What is that supposed to mean? Well, it just means that s minus u can be replaced with another variable. Let's call that w. And now I got that u plus 1 uh, is a multiple of 11. So that allows me to express u as... 11w minus 1, which is kind of like a parametric solution. In other words, when the values of the w changes, the w, the values of u are also going to be changing. Okay, so I got my solution for u, but also remember that s minus u is equal to w, 
and we know that u is equal to 11 w so is in other words s is equal to u plus w so i can now replace u with 11 w minus 1 from here and that should give me the value of s in terms of w because 11 w plus w is 12 w minus 1. so now we were able to get u and s in terms of another variable which is basically a parametric solution for this linear Diophantine equation great now what are we going to do with this we're going to go and back substitute and see what happens with x y and z let's go ahead and take a look at that now so we had remember our equation after we manipulated the powers of 3 we got something like this we got 2k is equal to 3m and that is equal to 4p and that was equal to 11s minus 1 okay Great. And obviously, at the same time, if you look at 11s minus 1, that is equal to 12u. So if you want, you can just go ahead and write this as 12u as well. Great. So that's probably going to make it a little easier. So if you get rid of the s and just use the u as an example. So this tells you something nice. If 2k is equal to 12u, then k can be written as 6u, and m can be written as 4u, and p can be written as 3u. You see, that's the beauty of going off of the least common multiple because we can now express everything in terms of a single variable again. Okay, great. So now I was able to write k in terms of u, m in terms of u, and p in terms of u. What is that supposed to mean? Well, if you remember, u is equal to 11w minus 1. So from here, I can basically express k, m, and p in terms of w, which is going to bring us closer to x, y, z. So let's go ahead and do that. k can be written as 6u. So if you multiply u here by 6, you get 6 to 6, w minus 6. m is equal to 4u, which is 44w minus 4. And p is equal to 3u, which is 33w minus 3. So I got my k and p values in terms of w. Let's go ahead and substitute those into x, y, z, and let's find our x, y, and z values. Now, remember going back to the first part, we said that x is equal to this, y is equal to that, so on and so forth, right? So from here, we can basically go ahead and replace k and p with those w values and then get the values of x, y, z, and obviously t as well. Okay, let's go ahead and do that now. So x is equal to, x is equal to, 3 to the power k, so we can write x as 3 to the power 66w minus 6. y is equal to 3 to the power m, so I can write it as 3 to the power 44w minus 4. And z is equal to 3 to the power 33w minus 3. So I got my x, y, z values, you know, in terms of w, but what about the t value, right? Well, t is equal to, if you remember, t is equal to... 3 to the power s, and s was expressed as 12w minus 1, so we can basically write t as 3 to the power 12w minus 1. So let's go ahead and write that down here, 12w minus 1 as a power of 3. So this basically gives us the solution as ordered quadruples, and by changing the values of w basically using positive integer values, you can get infinitely many solutions to this equation. For example, if w is equal to 1, if w is equal to 1, then you're going to be getting x is equal to 3 to the power 60, y is equal to 3 to the power 40, z is equal to 3 to the power 30, and t is equal to 3 to the power 11. All right? And obviously you can find much more, but basically this proves that there are infinitely many solutions to this equation in natural numbers. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Tomorrow I'll see you with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.